We're going to take a look at editing a 3D ultrasound image on the Vino portable units. Um, one of the most important things is that we start off with a good 2D image when we're trying to do 3D. So hopefully you'll be able to get a 2D image which is like the one that we have on screen here at the moment. We've got baby's profile, um, this is the baby's eye, we've got the nose here and the forehead. Um, this down here is baby's body, uh, looks like an arm and at the top uh, or in this space here we have the amniotic fluid. So if we can get a really nice uh, 2D image like this then we should be able to get a perfect 3D image. Um, it's not always possible to get a 2D image like this but this is the ideal scenario. So we've got baby's face in profile here. If we take a look at the control panel that we have when we're doing a 3D image we're going to have some options. We have an option up the top here to change the curve for the sampling box. We have an option to rotate the 3D image. This one here is rotate reset to get us back to um, the original settings if we've, if we've rotated the image as we're going. We also have ma magic cut which allows us to cut out some of the um, noise around baby's face. And these three features here, free view, 3D cut and vocal imaging are not what we typically use um, when we're doing baby face 3D imaging. At the top here we've got the flip, so the flip indicates um, what direction the 3D image is going to render in compared to where the baby's head is. If your um, profile is like it is on the right here, what you probably want is your flip to be at 90 degrees so that the 3D image is going to be facing up. So let's have a look at how that one looks. Okay, so this is the, um, this is the 90 degree flip. If we had it on 270, we would get the opposite, we'd get the upside down image. So see baby's head here is upside down. So usually when you have the profile, the profile picture like this, if baby's head is actually on the left hand side of the screen, the opposite of what we see here, then we'd want the flip to be at um, 270 degrees. Moving down, we've got options to change the threshold. So the threshold indicates how bright one of these echoes have to be to render into 3D. You usually want this to be around about 100 and the transparency, and the transparency is how transparent the 3D rendering is. Smoothness here will smooth out the 3D image and the display format. So at the moment we've just got it on the one screen, we can just see the 2D image here. This will give us a split screen between our baby face. Let's just put it back to a good flip for us. Um, between our baby face and the um, and the 2D image and this is really useful if you want to do some editing of the ROI boxes uh, like here for example if we edit the image on the left you'll see that the 3D image on the right moves as well. So if I'm not sure what I'm looking at I always like to have a, at least two of the black and white images here but you can get all three dimensions. The original cut So here we've got the original cut up the top left. Then this is the um, the other axis and then this is looking straight on top and this is our 3D rendering. Okay, sliding across we have some other options here. We've got the render type, so at the moment we've got it on the HQ render. Let's just change that to grad light. It's much easier and quicker to edit the images in grad light because there's less information for the unit to process. Um, so moving the image around, um, changing the settings. For example, I'll just change the threshold here to show you what that does. It happens very quickly, whereas in HQ there's a lot of data to process and so it happens a little bit slower. So decreasing the threshold will render more of the echoes and at the lowest point, just everything is going to look like a, uh, you know, it's, it's everything that's in the 2D image is going to appear here in the 3D image, which we don't want. So as I said, we usually have that up around 100. And the other thing that I usually like to adjust as well is the gain. So the first two things I adjust are the threshold and the gain. So the gain will change the um, the 2D image and therefore a change will affect the 3D render as well. So as we increase the gain we get more information 
on the 3D image. So sometimes it's just about balancing out the 2D and the 3D. Balancing out the threshold and the gain. Okay. So going back to this screen, um, we have uh, some options to change the color. So B color 7, B color 9. You just get a slightly different appearance on, on the 3D rendering here. That's what we're getting there. Um, the view up down, I'll show you what that does. It just basically renders the, we don't touch this because it just basically renders the 3D upside down, back to front, left to right, which is just makes things more difficult. So we leave that on up down. The rotation direction here you can change. Rotation direction is only useful if you're going to be using your steer knob to rotate the image. So for example at the moment we're rotating on the x-axis. And if I change that we can rotate on the y or the z-axis. Okay. The render type, again, we don't change because if you have a look at what it does, it just, um, it's not useful for baby face imaging. The movement step, um, and this is, this is not for 3D baby imaging, so we typically don't touch this either. Moving across, we can edit using the touch screen. So this is a really nice, easy way. You can just drag, drag your 3D image with your finger. If you want to rotate on one axis, just touch once and then do the rotation on that axis. Likewise, you can select a 2D image and you can move that around. Or you can use your cursor and you can click on any of these lines and drag them across to change your region of interest. So you can do that either via the touch screen or you can do it using your cursor. And down the bottom here you can see you can easily toggle between two modes, three modes, four modes. Okay. And then if you've made a mistake you can go back to the beginning by clicking rotate reset which is this button here. Now if we go back to 3D what we might do is choose another image and start right from the beginning with how we might edit this image if it uh, will hit rotate reset. We'll see if we can um, get this image and do what we do to change it normally. So having a look at this image I can see a couple of things by looking at the four screen view. First of all I can see that um, it's not the ideal, um, in this case they've taken the profile um, face on rather than taking the profile side on, which is what we've got here in the other axis. So it's not the ideal view to begin with, but it's okay, we can manage this. I can see that baby's forehead is um, cut off at the top here, and that's why we can't see it down the bottom here. So the first thing I might do is just take the curve function here, and I'm gonna select the B image, and I'm gonna use my trackball here to just get that curve line region of interest line up and over baby's head. It was down here before. So we take it up and over baby's head and we get a nice uh, full view of baby's head. Then I hit the button here curve again and I'm going to move across and just rotate this image so we're looking straight at baby and touch it again and just move it left and right just so we can see if we can get the best view. Then I'm going to decrease the gain a little and just increase it again until I feel like it's looking the best. And I'm just going to do the same with the threshold, just take it down a notch, see if we can bring out any more features. Other things that you can experiment with are the transparency. To make it a bit more solid, we increase the transparency. And this is the other extreme if we totally decrease it, it looks like that. Okay. So that's looking good. If we want to smooth it out a little bit more, we can do so. But I don't think we really need to do that. That looks quite nice. Now the other thing that we will do is use our magic cut just here to take away some of the extra noise around baby's head. 
So I'm going to choose inside lasso, which is going to mean that everything that we select is going to be erased inside this lasso that we're going to create. So I'm just going to do a rough job for now. Take it up and around and back to the beginning and press enter again and all of that will disappear. And I can use this knob here, this steer knob, to rotate back and forth if I want to try and just capture out this little bit here, for example. And you can do this as many times as you like until you get rid of all the noise. So if I come back now, that should be gone, which it is. Um, and if we wanted to, we could go around and we could take uh, all of these ones out of the back there, but I don't think that's necessary for now. So let's go back to 3D. And what I might do is just decrease or increase the threshold rather, just to get rid of that last little bit of noise around baby's nose. And once I'm happy with that, I just make sure that it's on 3D and I click the display format and give it one final little rotation there. And I'm just going to hit the save button.